Okay, so now we're in After Effects. First thing I'm gonna do is create a composition. So I'm gonna go composition, new composition. I want the video file to be about five seconds. I don't want no crazy animation. We just want five seconds of things moving around. So right here, I'm gonna go zero five, um, 1080p, okay, same canvas. I want it to be 60 frames and uh, I'm, I can even name it here. I can be like starting soon and click okay 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 now let's import our psd file you can press Control i or you can go file import file and we're gonna find our psd file now you found it here you can um there's many options you can choose from import as and i'm going to go composition retain layer sizes once you do that just click import now here's going to talk to you about the layer styles this is what i referred to as effects basically the drop shadow the the gradient overlay and everything so i'm going to click editable well technically i don't need it so let's just go with merge style you know what let's go with editable layer style just in case we want to change stuff later so it's always good to have that option so right now we have our main composition that we created called starting soon that has nothing in it and then um, it imported that PSD as another composition that's also called Starting Soon. So it's called Starting Soon 2. What I can do is double click and it will open it as a composition. Okay, so um, here so here in the toolbar, you can set which resolution you want the preview to be. Uh, we're going to set it for to full right now because it should be fine. But usually if um, your computer is slow, it's better to go to, to a lower resolution so you can work faster. So I'm glad we had editable layer styles because it kind of messed up my gradient here. So we're going to try to fix that. Remember, layer zero is going to be our background. Um, this layer is going to be the orange background. Nice. And then we have our top rectangle and we have our bottom rectangle. So let me go to the top and then I'm going to go to the effects control and um, and I have no idea how to fix my layer style. Oh, never mind. So you click on the little arrow and you see the layer style. So quite satisfied with that. Um, so we'll, now we can start animating. So if you're wondering how people do animated overlays, it's basically moving stuff um if you know the principles of keyframing it's hey at this point of time this object should be there and later on this object should be there and then the program will automatically make that object travel from left to right from top to bottom from wherever so we're going to use this basic principle i know that this is what i want my overlay to look like in the middle of my animation because we want to create a perfect loop we want our animation to be seamless right because it's going to play for several minutes usually so right now my composition is five seconds. So I'm going to go around 250 or 230, I should say, because it's 60 frames per second. So at two seconds plus 30 frames, <laughs> I'm going to set position keyframes. And what I'm going to be moving is those darker rectangles, basically. So I'm going to select one dark rectangle. I'm going to hold control to select the second one. And I'm going to press P on my keyboard. P will give me the position values. So I pressed it. So you can see here, I don't know if you guys can actually see this or if my face is blocking it, but I'm gonna put it up like that. Should I get rid of my face? I should get rid of my face. Let's get rid of my face. Whoops. Anyways, okay, now you should be able to see everything. Okay, so I pressed P on my two uh, darker rectangles, the dark gray ones, and I have the position values here. So it's in, in order to enable the keyframe, I'm gonna click on the time watch on both. So right now at 2.30, there is a keyframe. Now I'm gonna go to the beginning. In order to get a perfect loop, basically you need your first frames and your last frames to, to be the same. Basically your first frame is gonna be the same as your last frame. That's gonna ensure a perfect loop. So it's gonna be seamless. No one will be like, oh, it just cut like a GIF, you know? Want it to be seamless. So now I'm going to change the position of these rectangles and I'm gonna make sure to copy and paste those keyframes to the last position. So it just does the movement. What, what we're trying to do is get them to go to the middle and expand. Anyways, let me just show you instead of uh, telling you. So right here, if I move, I can just click and move this, okay? As you can see, it created an, an automatic uh, keyframe. 
because well the time watch is enabled uh and if i do the same thing with this one there we go we're mostly eyeballing it that's completely fine so right now if i go in my timeline and i do this you'll see that oh look it's alive but there's no keyframe at the at the end yet so if i go to five seconds i'm still stuck in the middle basically it's it doesn't move anymore so now if it plays back let me let me give you a quick playback so now while it's playing back okay it'll get towards the middle it'll stop and then you can tell where it stops so in order to create a perfect loop so i'm going to do this um one by one basically i'm gonna select this keyframe Control c press the end button on my keyboard to go at the last frame of the composition and then Control v so basically the first keyframe is going to be pasted in onto um, the last frame. So now if I do my replay, it's going to look like this. So it gets close and then it expands. Now I know what you're thinking. This is kind of janky. It doesn't feel uh, good. <laughs> it doesn't look too good because of the way of the speed. Basically, everything is a constant speed. And it goes in and out. There's no uh, velocity. There's no speed. There's no real anything realistic about the way it moves. The movement is a little too robotic. So we're gonna smooth it out by using uh, different methods. First thing we want we we do want is for it to kind of slow down when it's in the middle, and then slowly pick up speed again. That's gonna make it look better. Uh, towards the end, we do want it to slow down. And same thing in the middle, we want it to slowly pick up speed. So there are um, multiple ways of doing that. Well, actually, there, there isn't really. <laughs> what I'm going to do is select the middle one. We want it to smooth in and smooth out. And we're going to go to Keyframe Assistant and click Easy Ease. That is exactly what it does. And right now, now I'm only playing this little section, but you can see that it's way different. It feels a little more uh, natural. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a different thing, actually. For the first keyframe, we're going to ease out. So now it's going to slowly pick up speed and and then go towards the middle. And for this one, we're going to ease in because we want it to come in and slow down. Okay, so you'll see what it looks like right now. Now there are more options to make the movement even smoother. You would have to click here, which is uh, the graph editor, and it will and it would uh, show you the keyframes. You need to select keyframes before. Um, for example, the middle one, we know that it, it slows in and out. And basically, this is what our graph looks like. If I really wanted to make it really slow, let me actually get both right now. I could really, really play around with that. That means. It's going to pick up a lot of speed here, but it's going to really slow down before it gets to the middle. And same thing when it goes back out. Basically, you can really play around with that, but we don't have time. Now that we have our perfectly animated starting soon screen, what we can do is just go to composition, add to render queue, and then render it. My favorite type of render right now, basically, you click on lossless here, output module. That's this where you, you basically pick up your file options. Um, I like exporting QuickTime, but this is just my preference. And format option, I go H.264, if I can find it. There it is. Okay. Um, everything is fine. You don't have to touch anything. Just put audio output off. So no audio. And then here you can click where you want it to export to. Now I did select QuickTime, so it's going to be a .mov file. It's also going to be a lossless compression, so the file is going to be pretty, uh, pretty big. But that doesn't matter. If you have ways to compress your video, if you want it to be MP4 or something like that, even WebM, that also works with most broadcasting software. So I'm going to click Save, and then I'm going to render it. Click Render. And then just wait a bit until it does that sweet, sweet, sweet little uh, sound. That means that your render is complete. 
Hey, that was way louder than I expected. Uh, it will scare you, but it's going to be a good scare because that means, well, your render is complete. Now you can go in your folder and you can take a look at it like that. The best way to look at it is actually to put it on loop. Uh, I'm new to Windows 10. I don't know how you can loop it. Repeat. Let's go. And now that you're on Streamlabs OBS, for example, you can go create a new scene, press the plus near your, your scene collection, basically, and then type whatever you want. I'm going to click test. You would want to call this starting soon and then click the plus on your sources here to add a new source. But this is a video, so it's not going to be an image. It's going to be a media source. That's where you get your multimedia files, such as videos. Well, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it. Uh, called media source you can click browse to find it once you found it double click on it but do not forget to click loop because if you don't this is what happens so if you click loop if you click loop <laughs> it's gonna stay and it's gonna loop the way it's meant to so just click done and you're done you just created your very own animated overlay or intermission screen in that case a starting soon screen so yeah, this is the basic knowledge you need to know when it comes to creating animated anything. As I said, uh, After Effects is not like exclusively the only program you can use to do this, um, but it's one of them. So if you already have it, it's great. If you're considering doing that uh, a lot, well, maybe you should get Adobe After Effects. But any editing software, I could have done the same thing pretty much in um, Adobe Premiere. It would be a little different with the PSD stuff, but what you can do, for example, if you don't have the ability to open up like a, an image uh, project, what you can do is just export every single asset. So I would have one one rectangle, the other rectangle exported uh, with a transparent background separately. And then I would put them in any editing software and animate them from there. I know you're probably asking, is this overlay pack going to be available? No, it will not unless I spend more time and work on it. So to make it look a little bit better, this was mostly an example. If you are looking for some dope overlay packs, you can go to gumroad.com slash get level. I have a bunch of them. Some of a lot of them are free and uh, the rest is super, super cheap. I've been getting a lot of comments about what type of gear I use to do my YouTube videos, my lighting, uh, my audio audio setup and everything, my camera. Um, there will be some Amazon affiliate links in the description of, of my videos. There will be one link for to a Amazon shop that is for the UK, so it's gonna be EU, and there will be a link for the US. I know most of my viewers are actually from the US, so I didn't forget about you guys. Talking about affiliation, if you haven't started streaming yet or if you're using a different program, you should definitely download Streamlabs OBS. It is pretty much the best broadcasting software out there and of course you can do that through my affiliate link in the description it's completely free for you but if you do download from my link i'm getting a little bit of money and charity is also getting a little bit of money so please consider it other than that uh remember that i have a show where i review your streams that happens on friday 9 p.m cet that is paris time called stream review it's stream review it's i basically check out your stream so i've been getting so many dms like can you check out my stream can you check out my stream yes i can if you stop by stream review on fridays at 9 p.m PMCET on my Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv slash get level. Enough rambling. I will see you guys next time. Go out there. Make me proud. Get level out.